Hey folks, welcome back. We're at the start of the early modern era as the Inca, one of the new DLC cultures, so that's very exciting to see what they can do. I'll give a brief overview here in a second. We just came out of the medieval as the Taino. Uh, we went Mycenaeans into the Garamantes the, uh, from the culture of Africa back a little while ago into the Taino. Been interesting so far. A little bit of a slow start, honestly. My uh, resource generation isn't what it could be. Been pretty focused on military in order to expand. And for now, this blue player over here who started as the Assyrians are ahead of me. They're still in the medieval era. Which is interesting that they have more fame than me and are an era behind. But, you know, I had to make some sacrifices this game in order to get ahead. So we'll uh, outpace them eventually. Let's talk about the Inca really quickly. They're an expansionist, um, which the stars for expansionists are much easier to generate now which than they than they used to be. Uh, I think the terrace farm is possibly the most interesting part of the Inca. So it's minus sensibility. They have plus two vision range, which is a little strange. Um, but the terrace farms give plus three food per adjacent mountain, uh, plus three food on districts per adjacent mountain, and minus 25% territory attachment costs on adjacent territories. I don't think that one's as important. That's just a nice little addition. I think the important part about this really, so it gets the food, so you can work those mountain tiles with food, but it also exploits industry. Um, and those two exploitations are the most important exploitations. There aren't a lot of tiles that have money and science on them. So terrace farms can be placed pretty much anywhere and get most of the yields that are going to be there. And the thing is, is that they can be placed like hamlets, right? So I'll show you right here. Um, so I can place them on any tile that is adjacent to a mountain. So we're going to get started on those because they are pretty good. Uh, well, do, I have a Beatty in queue still. I do think these are more important to get than the Beatty's at the end of the day, so we'll get a few of these queued up here. Um, let's see. I think the plus one industry is more important than the plus one food, generally. So we'll add that into the queue. And before I forget, uh, the unit is the Sapa Inca Guards. So I believe these all are a halberd replacement. I think they have the same combat strength too, if I'm not mistaken. You can come off chivalry here. Okay, so they have two more combat strength. Uh, the difference is that, other than the plus two combat strength, is Imperial Bastion. So much stronger when fighting from high ground and fortified positions. Uh, I believe this is basically going to be the same effect as the Immortals, uh, where you know, high ground and fortified positions. They have combat strength bonus. It might be a little bit more for this culture, but we will see. So we're going to go straight into patronage per usual and see what we can get going as far as um, as far as manufactories. Are we? It's been a while since I played. I had to take a few days off because I was pretty busy over the weekend. Oh, interesting. So you don't need halberds. To for the Sapa Inca Guard. Okay. Which means I can start upgrading my units right now. So they're better than halberdiers, but you don't need the tech for them. That is even better than I thought they were going to be, honestly. Okay, so they'll retreat there. So we're going to go for Kerma with that army, I think. And over here... Okay, all these guys can get upgraded as swordsmen. I don't have anything that would upgrade to my emblematic unit. I'm not going to do that yet. I don't think I'm going to have a war with blue for a little while still. So I'd like to hold off until I can upgrade those guys to musketeers. Um, however, I do need to start really thinking about getting my um, getting my science up. It has been a little bit of a struggle for me this game. It's a pretty good um, terrace farm there. The other thing about terrace farms as well is that you can build other... Actually, that was... So that's an overstatement of how much industry I'll get. I don't think that spot's as good as it says because I'm going to be working it from that terrace right there. Hmm. 
13 and 12 right there is not too bad. Twenty-one food is pretty good there too, but I don't think we need the food as much. Let's go right there, and then we'll see after that. Uh, we will need the high furnace as well, um, but we do need to get our science output up. So, Sapar and Babylon are going to be our two sort of mains for that. Let's see. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, because they have the astronomy houses in there from the former Babylon player. Okay, nice. So, uh, Taj Mahal and Top Cappy are still available. Um, I think I'm still going to grab Taj Mahal. I do need to scale up my money output as well. And Taj Mahal is going to help a lot with that. I also have pretty high stability because of playing the Taino. And the Taino, uh, the Beatty, uh, gives, is one of the districts that actually gives you stability rather than taking it away. Kind of synergizes with their legacy trait. Let's see. Yeah, so... These seem pretty good, considering you don't need the tech for them. You just get them as soon as you enter the era, uh, which was an unexpected benefit for them. That was the same thing with the Taino as well, with their emblematic unit. You did not need the crossbow tech in order to build them, um, which is really quite important for units. Like, unit, wait, who declared war? Oh, I can resolve this war. Okay, well, we're going to try to take Kerma first before we end this war. Back these guys up. And they they don't have any reinforcements, alright. So we're just gonna smash our Inca guards on the front line there. Okay, I have 35 there. Then we'll bring our uh Byra hunters up. Okay, just... Alright, because I already moved them this round because they were reinforcements. Forgot about that. Huh? Ah, there we go. Come on. Just uh, filter through this one spot so all, all these remaining Javelin Riders can fire. I've become a big fan of the Javelin Riders. I'm, a, I'm more impressed by the Garamantes than I uh, thought I was going to be since I hadn't played them yet. I also have this, um, I have this cider that I got from a local cidery. It's this, uh, cherry bourbon dry cider. It's not too bad. Is it the best cider I've ever had? Probably not. Um, but it's not too bad. What are they building here? Great Tory. Is this new? Oh, it's a, um, okay, I was like, I was confused, I thought it was a wonder, it's a religious district. Got it, that makes more sense. Okay, let's resolve this war. Let's force your surrender, give me Kerma and all the attached territories, and that leaves me just enough for Napata as well. There we go. Then, we get there. We'll use the Javelin Riders to uh, burn that. Oh, they have Todaiji here as well. Okay, so Kerma is actually very nice for us because we've been struggling to generate money. Let's put people on industry first and then on money. So this is going to help us a lot uh, in getting some of our era stars going forward. Uh, probably not worth building that terrace farm there. Oh, they don't have a pottery workshop? Good lord. Let's get some of these in here. 
Um, high furnace will be good. How much do I get? 51 industry? Yeah, let's get that in there. I'm going to just buy that because that's a pretty big boost to the industry in this city. All right. Over here, I don't... Wow, 40 food in there. Good lord. <laughs> Some pretty good terrace farms in here. Good thing I have a lot of mountains. I did pick the Inca knowing I would have a lot of mountains, so... Okay. And the Aztecs sent an alliance proposal. You know what? Yeah, let's do that for now. And... Let's get a scientific agreement if we can. No, okay. Okay, who do I have crises? Okay, I'm so I just formed an alliance here. I'm going to renounce that. Um, and I have an alliance with yellow here too. So I'm going to renounce that. So we can get a share of the Dristex, yeah. So my plan is to use these guys as a springboard later in the game to assault the blue player, who is um, pretty far ahead on things. Okay, we'll buy the rest of those luxuries at some point in the future. Let's go expert policy here. I do have a mix of districts in here. Um, it's not going to be food I focus on. I might go for science. Let's see. So stability is still recovering. Let's get a theater for a little bit of influence. We will need a high furnace as well. We need to claim this territory too. Let's get on that. We'll generate a grievance by... Wait. Since when was it the Aztecs? That was... That's weird. I have an alliance with the Aztecs, but whatever. I'm going to... Yeah, okay. Why won't you ransack it? I, I agree. I guess it doesn't let me do it because it's my allies? I thought that was still Brown's. Like, did Brown make a demand? Or did the Aztecs make a demand and they gave it to them? That's very bizarre. I don't know why you would give that territory to the Aztecs. Um, not worried about fundamental values. We're not building either of those kind of districts. Gotta see if I can... No, okay. Well... <laughs> I value having this territory, so I'm just going to break that alliance. Wait, they declared war on me? Oh, that's funny. Okay, well... <laughs> they're welcome to try to kill me. I can promise them it's not going to work. Let's see. Um, oh, these units are cheap. 349 industry is almost nothing. Get a little army here just in case. Alright, Pestilent Pastures. This is not an event I'm familiar with. Okay, Usually, these are smaller events. Um, you can get negative effects from them. I'll get plus 25 money and minus 20 science. I can get another negative effect, and I have a feeling eliminate may perhaps be better uh, in terms of the temporary effects, but this is not going to affect my alignments, and this is going to lose me a lot of influence generation, so I am going to go for control as the option there.
Don't let those javelin riders worry about stuff. Get rid of this independent people here. Oh, that was too far. Whoops. I meant to move them there and then move them back. That was a little silly of me. So the idea is to go here. And I'm actually going to play this very defensively. But knights can be pretty dangerous, honestly. You do have to take a little bit of care when you're battling with them. But this gives me high ground. Should do it. Okay. And we'll go ahead and uh, pillage that on the next turn as well. Don't need independent people there. Probably gonna go try to pillage that outpost up there or something. Because the AI are weird like that. But they're gonna be suffering other oh, the poles now. Oh wait, I declared war? What? When did, how did I declare war? I just... I mean, I broke the alliance and pillaged their outpost, but that doesn't usually trigger a war deck. Okay, well, they're sending units to me, so at least I can fight some battles. Um, I am going to have to figure out what to do here. I'm going to need a navy. Men of War unlocked pretty late. I might have to go... Well, I'll need Gunpowder Warfare. I guess I have to rely on COGS. I'd like to get 3 Masted Ship as well for the Caravel so I can move my units. Well, that is really going to screw things up. I guess I must have not paid attention to some... Uh, notification when I was like pillaging their farm it was the only thing I can think of because I feel like I know what those notifications are telling me so I never really read them that's yeah, not too bad there go ahead and attach this outpost oh not want to die that's fine too Yeah, gonna need some cogs. Five should be sufficient. Probably four is sufficient, but want to be extra safe. Okay, I'm just gonna buy that terrace farm in Babylon. We'll get working on the baby. Now. The one disadvantage, it seems, to um, the Inca here is that it seems like the Terrace Farms don't provide specialist slots. Um, so I'm already overpopulated, so I would prefer to be... I would like to have districts that provide me with specialist slots so I can not be overpopulated anymore and continue to grow. Not really an option for me, unfortunately. Okay. Um, 809 per turn, still not very much. Pretty good amount of money over here. Let's kill up a couple of those. And we're actually going to build Taj Mahal in our new city of Kerma, I think. It'll have another wonder there, too. But... Taj Mahal applies to cities uh, that are settled, so they need the stability to be settled. And I think it generates me the most money by a fairly wide margin. Pretty close to that one there, but still like 60 more. So we're going to use Taj Mahal here. It does The 50% money does apply to everything on your empire. 
uh, as long as they're settled. But the Taj Mahal will give it a little bit of extra stability as well to help make sure it's generating that. Okay, political entitlement. Um, I don't really need to pick one of those quite yet. Go for this uh, plus one science on holy site, though. I do have some holy sites now. Could think about absorbing some cities, but it would be a pretty big stability impact. I'm well over my city limit at the moment. Let's see. Let's, is it, yeah, supply lines gives me city cap. I have a lot of techs that I need, like right now. <laughs> and my tech output is not great. Go ahead and attach this one. We'll attach this one down here as well. Somehow that's giving me more stability rather than less. I don't really know what's happening there. Um, I, I do need science and money, right? I need my Aerostars. Get that salt. So, uh, are the Aztecs coming for me or no? <laughs> Start spawning the cogs up there. Ah, there they are. Yes, they're taking the long way. Or just like going for my random... They like to come pillage harbors for whatever reason. Um, I think it's just easy for them to do. Need those in here. And then... Really need science quarters. That looks fine. Those look, both look good, as a matter of fact. Also need some stability. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get these research quarters before I get the, the terrace farms. And I think I'm gonna... Okay, Babylon's done with them already, so that's fine. But I was gonna say, I think I might need to do the same in Babylon. I'm going to lose some yields over here, but this makes for, there's more open space here for research quarters, and over here is kind of weird terrain. So I'm going to do it this way. Also, I'm adjusting my camera a little bit. It's a little bit high. All right, Civic Osmosis. Uh, I mean, I don't like that one. It doesn't make sense, but I, I can't afford that stability. So, we'll just accept it for now. We can deal with it later. Okay. Let's get the science stuff in here before everything else. You guys are just hanging out. Cogs are just hanging out. You guys can come up this way. I'm going to go ahead and buy out these cogs, see if we can do something about these guys as they're still on the ocean. Minus 50% on garrison. Industry cost. No. <laughs> I think Napata can handle the influence hit here, or the uh, stability hit. Interesting. Okay, so in my, I know there was a hot fix. I wonder if something got messed up because in Bolivar, when the update came out, I could build this city watch after I had built the Cyclopean Fortress. Um, oh, this is Napata, not Mikne. I thought it was in Mikne. Okay, I was going to say um, they fixed the, okay, so I screwed up a bit there. I was going to say they fixed the issue with um, unique districts or emblematic districts that should have been counted as uh, garrisons not being garrisons. But it seems like it might have been reverted because I thought I had Cyclopean Fortresses in here, but I was looking at the wrong city.
Okay, let's get this uh, stability per researcher. Move the terrace farm down. Everything else can get built before. Just on. Who's the... Other empire cannot trade when not allied. Interesting. Is that from a some kind of civic that they have? I haven't seen that before. I think it must be. I seem to recall a civic that requires you to be allied. There's patronage. Start generating some war support by uh, farming these guys out in the ocean here. Now this might be a good one. The uh, reduced requirements to create manufactories. Let's see where I can get them. Pearls and sage there. Babylon can't get anything. Gnosis can only get ebony. Napata can't get anything. Kerma. Sage and pearls. Okay. Well, we'll definitely get one in uh, Kerma. Gnosis will do the hardwood. I like to distribute these a little bit for the stability effects. Pirates right down there. Make sure we're building these first, since it is competitive and there are other people in the same era. Pearls right up to here. And if I can't purchase either of those, let's make sure we're not missing any, because the manufactories are incredibly important. Thought I would miss something there for a second. Zoning out a little bit. Um, and Kerma is good, it looks like. All right. Go ahead and claim this old city in here. That's fine. You want to go after this one right here, because it is a, it is retreating. Doesn't look like I'll be able to get to it, so we'll just attack right here. And, <laughs> wow. Well, sucks for the AI. Make sure we kill the crossbows here. Because otherwise they could get up onto the land and start shooting at us, which we don't want. And they also made a city. So we're going to need actual units to deal with that. However, that does give us um, ammunition. Did something happen here? They must have been at war with the Harappans. I feel like this territory was attached to San Lorenzo at one point. <laughs> they have a lot of grievances on me. That happens. Okay, I gotta go up to the next era, but I definitely don't want to do that yet. Way too early. I have plenty of things left to do in this era. Okay, so I have three master ship coming. Then probably... Let's go for supply lines for the city cap and then gunpowder warfare. With the uh, Inca's emblematic unit and the uh, Byra hunters that I have from the last era, pretty confident that I can uh, wage a fairly competent conflict here. Now, as far as this event, I'm going to go for this new army because I think this this one gives me, yeah, gives me Karax that I can use, and I can also use those to attack uh, Krakow down here because they are ranged. 
So kind of like battleships or whatever, and, you know, sort of use them as like a soft artillery, if you will, a direct fire artillery. Whereas the cogs, uh, I cannot do that with. I'm just going to use them to run around and snipe these units to the extent that I can and sort of farm war support. Do I have a trade agreement with them? Let's renounce that. I'm just going to refuse their demands. And let's see. Oh, interesting. They can't trade if they're not at. It's, is it me that can't trade when I'm not allied? Like, is there anyone able to? Huh. Okay. I want that territory. I want that silver down there. I should send the unit down. Kerma is single-mindedly focused on Taj Mahal at the moment. I don't think I need anyone else to work on that. How would I get 10 food from placing a market porter there? Oh, does the... Um, I guess the terrace farm works on all... Yeah, look at that. Interesting. So the terrace farm, this plus three food on districts per adjacent mountain, I guess applies to all districts. They did not fully think through the implications of that. Um, so I'm just going to get a cheap unit down here. I'll actually go for the javelin riders um, and just send them down to claim that territory for me. And in two turns, we'll have three mastered ship. So they'll be a little speedy about it. We'll want to think about what cities can be absorbed into each other. Like, I might be able to absorb uh, Gnosis into Babylon here. Mm, too bad they got up on the land. But let's make use of these Karax. There's a Barbic in there. We're going to go ahead and attack this city. I'm going to start my archers over here so they can all get up onto the land right away. Let's go ahead and end the round there. Don't really need to get my units up there, I just need to kill these peasants and then I win. There we go. Alright. I just can come up this way. Definitely gonna think about absorbing one into the other here. I don't. What's my excess stability? 64% surplus there. 44% surplus here. I can always detach a territory as well and absorb it into Napata. I'm going to do it. Minus 816 food, because I have too much population. I'm going to have them work on Taj Mahal. I'm actually going to have everyone work on Taj Mahal. Um, and then, by the research quarter, when the time comes, uh, I'm going to use some of that excess population Ooh, there we go. I'll use some of the excess population to buy out uh, Taj Mahal. That's the plan. Don't want to lose that army, thank you very much. Can I attack him with these? Doesn't look like it. It's too bad. So we'll just need to throw an army in here. 
This one is the least important, I think, because it's just a bunch of great swords mostly. So we'll leave them with Krakow so they don't just walk back into it. But the rest of these are all going to make their way towards San Lorenzo, I think. Yeah, so San Lorenzo has the Great Pyramids, and they do have a few quarters that I would like to have. Leventa does seem more well-developed, though, so it's a trade-off. Do I want to go for Leventa, or do I want to go for the one with the Wonder? Great Pyramids would definitely help me a bit. Send you guys down here. Should actually really have an army in Kerma. Let's have you guys come back down that way, just in case the brown player decides they want to declare war on me again. Let's come back to that. Okay. I'm gonna move these guys first. Okay, they have a cog fleet now, so I'll need to be mindful of that. Poles are making some very silly decisions here. I can get into... Uh, do I have an open border treaty here? No. For some reason it's letting me enter that territory though, which is interesting. Okay, I think we go for science investing. Yeah, moves me along the ideology axis so I get a little more science. And uh, I just need a flat boat boost to my science right now because my science output is not great. Both my science and money outputs are low this game. I have a zero attach outpost cost. Okay, gonna buy this out. 27 population, because <laughs> I have so much food. I'm gonna attach this outpost as well. There we go. Let's make sure... Okay, actually, let's get that research quarter first. And then... These right here, and then we can work on those terrace farms. We do want those. Oh, right, I'm an expansionist, that's why I can move through. I completely forgot about that. I forgot the Inca are expansionist. So I can get up onto the land here with my armies, which I think I'm going to do. We'll dismiss, get a little extra combat strength on our units. Working on that plus one city cap. Ah, we can resolve the war. I think I would like to take San Lorenzo though. So thankfully, with the update, you are no longer forced to resolve the war. So we're not going to yet. This is going to be a little silly. Just uh, get him off. Distribute the damage a little bit. Some, I think uh, sometimes armies just need to be destroyed in situations like this. I get it would be sometimes be frustrating. Be sometimes be. It would sometimes be frustrating. Um, but sometimes these battles are a little bit pointless. If you're trapped like that, the army should just be wipes. Okay. End the turn.
Hopefully they don't have wing toss stars yet. So we're going to go ahead and attack their navy first. Get them out of the way. That seems fine. That one can't shoot for some reason. <laughs> Focus fire on the cog here. They're still alive somehow. So I just want to take these cogs out so they're not running around during my siege. I just want to use my Karax to focus fire on their land units. Come on. Okay, so all my cogs will survive. There we go. And then initiate the attack down here. So my cogs are not really of any use here. They can't attack ground units. They're just going to back them up a bit. And our deployments. We'll start uh, bringing in our ground units here. Crossbows are a very nice first kill. Take those guys out too. Let's see. Our archers, move them there. Not archers, but yeah, whatever the unit's called. I should have these guys come back here because they might have some Jaguar warriors that decide they want to join the party. Yeah, because they would have attacked my hunters if I left them in that spot. Silly that I cannot move there. Or, or see there. If I can with those units, it makes no sense. Line of sight is still a little uh, awkward in this game sometimes, in, in my opinion. So make sure we're taking out the Jaguar Warriors. Definitely more dangerous than some of the other units. Get in the city here. Might as well make that attack, I suppose. I'm gonna have to kill him eventually. Kill those peasants. Possible I lose one of my units here. This guy's pretty low health at the moment. Yeah, there they go. That's fine. I'm not too concerned about losing single units at this point in the game. Like, early on, um, in, in the Ancient Era, losing a single unit is a pretty big hit. In this situation, not so much. There we go. San Lorenzo. And now we can force a surrender. Give me both of your cities. Thank you. Okay. And now the Haudenosaunee 
have a lot of resources that I would like access to. The, oh, they have Varangians. Okay. <laughs> There's the only two spots I can build this. I shouldn't lose that much industry from that. Um, I might pillage this outpost of theirs. Because I am expansionist, so I can do that. Or steal it, you know, whatever. Just put that wherever, it doesn't matter. Now, Krakow is not a city that I need. Um... We'll just have it put some production in Todaiji, and then we're going to pillage it. And then just drop a new outpost on it. It's not a useful city in any way, shape, or form. Over here, get some infrastructure. It's about expert policy as usual. Get their supply lines. Just want to heal these guys up, then we're going to go uh, steal this outpost over here. Okay. A bit of a bind for log trees, this game. I guess someone must have built the gemstone manufactory already, yeah. No, I do not want that. It's going to tank my stability. Am I okay with losing 19 science? For 40 stability? I think I am. Okay. Then in the meantime, I uh, work on a playhouse so I can getting that influence going. Have you come back to Kerma? Gonna take a while to get that outpost up. Okay, we're working on gunpowder at the moment. How am I on fame? 10.9, not too bad. Sasha, no, I like that. Um, I'm gonna keep the one I have. Normally I'd just be like, sure, whatever. Actually, let's um, do under one banner here. I'm gonna heal these guys up. Send them over, and then oh, it's three pop for those guys. We'll work on a couple more hunters to uh, supplement our units here, just in case they send an army up to deal with them. They don't need to care axe here. Any civics I want? Political entitlement, I will want at some point, but I'm mostly going to use it to uh, kind of adjust back towards the liberty axis. That's the reason why I hold on to some civics sometimes, right, is um, like the effect is fine, but you mostly use them to change your ideology after like random events, move them in a way that you don't want them. Or if there's a particular civic that you want that has a, a bad effect, in terms of your alignment. Go ahead and get another terrace farm there. Finish that high furnace. Um, I can get even more terrace farms. I do want all of them because it's going to increase the food I'm getting on all the tiles that are adjacent to mountains, right? So it's really going to sustain me on food for most of the rest of the game. But... I do want other districts as well, and I think I'm going to go for some market quarters. I don't mind losing three industry on that river. And Napata. What are you building after this? Oh, they're pillaging me there. I mean, that's not really an important outpost in the slightest. Let's recombine some of these armies. Now that I have more army slots. Yeah. 
And probably get more research quarters in here. That's a weird spot for a research quarter. We're going to build them out in this direction. Make sure we get that infrastructure. It's actually more important than those research quarters, I think. Okay, more tech. Don't really need chivalry. I think movable typeface, we're going to start needing that extra science, right? And idle armies. Okay, kind of blocking me from getting on the land there. A little annoying. Probably go to war with Blue soon. Ah, I forgot I have an alliance with these guys. <laughs> Being a little aggressive. I'm fine with maintaining this alliance. I do have the scientific agreement and the cultural agreement, which are giving me some um, some benefits to my science and culture. So I'm okay with maintaining that alliance for now. They're just a rump state at the moment. Go for encourage there. And we are going to need some saltpeter. Make sure we're getting that. So as you can see, the um not being able to just build a million manufactories as soon as you have access to them can pretty significantly affect your game here. My outputs are a lot lower than they might otherwise be at this point in the game. I don't have a lot of saltpeter either. I feel like I usually have more than this. Don't like these guys in my territory. We'll deal with them. So the uh, Haudenosaunee are definitely going to be a target of my ire here as well. They're doing reasonably well for themselves. Okay. I'm gonna wait till Musketeers for these guys. So we're going movable type plate typeface into Flintlock. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna do a turn into each of these terrace farms so I don't lose them. And I'll build them at a later point in the game. I don't really need them right now though. These units have just decided they don't want to move. Okay, Napata is finishing up the terrace farm here. Top Cappy was claimed by Jusson. Definitely going to have to deal with them soon. Probably going to need another army for them, to be completely honest. Um, let's get the taxation office. I will get a decent amount of money off that. Actually, let's detach that territory and then attach it to Karma. Then I can start, um, whoops. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a terrace farm there, and then I can start building the market quarters out that way and keep building that market quarter adjacency to make sure I'm getting a reasonable amount of um, of money so I can finally start earning my merchant stars. I don't think I've gotten any merchant stars this game, so it'd be really nice to start getting those. We'll have to worry about stability in here. Um... I can repurpose someone, start working on Todaiji. But we'll worry about that in a little bit. Everyone's still got stuff going on in their queue. How many turns left on Under One Banner? Just one. Very nice. Go ahead and attach here. 
So that does that make sense? And yeah, I think we focus on the money in here. Are there, there's a garrison in here somewhere. Huh. How much longer is Defiant? Four turns? I think we just wait it out. We are going to need more stability in here at some point. 15 stability right there is pretty good. Let's purchase that playhouse. Actually use some of the money where we've finally been saving up. This so, uh, gemstone right here would be really nice to get. I think most of their luxes are over here though. Yeah, like all these luxuries would be really nice to get access to. Blue doesn't have as many. It's interesting that they're ahead of the other players in fame. Because, like yes, they do have some okay cities. But they don't have a lot of luxury resources, which are really, really important. Even for the AI. With all the special advantages that they they get to make them better. Um, so I do find it a little curious that they're the ones in like second place and were in the fame lead for a long time until I overtook them. Okay, so I could upgrade these guys to uh, Arquebuses. Right now I value that indirect fire more, but once I get Musketeers I'll probably change my mind. Which is five turns from now. Okay, Napata. How am I doing on religion? Okay. So, I'm going to get a holy site, like right here, to help boost the stability and uh, maintain my religious pressure. Keep up a couple research quarters here, but we are going to have them work on uh, Todaiji here. I do wonder what these upgrade into. I could see maybe knights, but otherwise do they like wait until dragoons? I'm actually not sure. Still gonna use them either way. Any crises? Yeah. And how about with uh, this guy? There are two blue players in this game. Just grab that school, grab that manuscript atelier. Now, it's not the most efficient right there, but I do have a lot of districts that are adjacent to mountains. So that is going to get me a lot of food on all these other districts, uh, which will help me continue to grow in the future. Uh, we will want this artisan workshop as well. And let's get that after the terrace farm and start working on some of the science infrastructure. So that has really crappy um, industry, to be honest. Oh, interesting. This is very interesting. Hold on. How many terrace farms do I have in here? Because terrace farms plus free food on districts per adjacent mountain. So I should only be, I should be getting six food here. There's something funky going on with the food calculation. I was thinking that maybe um, it was making the district count as though it is working food, which means if you are the Inca, right, and the terrace farm sort of makes your thing count as, you know, sort of a farmer's quarter for the tile that it's on, then you could build on all the rivers. Um, and not uh, lose some of the benefits. Really? I'm just about to recover stability here. I do not want that. Statistic ownership. Um, definitely going to go for the uh, academic arts here, which gives me some influence on science quarters. 
put a turn in that terrace farm and set on. I'm gonna switch. I'm sure we're getting the science infrastructure in here. The sign industry is really not that much. 19 industry down there is quite a bit. Okay, we're gonna move this terrace farm down. We'll put one turn into that and then move that out of the way. Terrace farms we want available for later because they are very good uh, districts or quarters, whatever you want to call them. The issue is like, I need other things right now, right? So we're gonna move them like way down here and I'll maintain them when I go into the next era. So tenants, uh, <laughs> someone chose to stay in the faithful at an awful tenant. Obviously, meditate often is the choice here, not really any other option. Okay, one turn for musketeers. And go a little bit crazy. Alright. Need a few more turns to make sure we fill the rest of that out. How much do we need for... Okay, we need three more techs for the scientist stars. Need uh, nine... Oh, my phone just fell. Need nine more techs for um, the... Or nine more districts for the builder stars. Uh, maybe get an SD star too. We'll see. Mercantilism would be fine. We'll go for chartered companies. I think we need all that extra money output. And then we might want to consider mortars, actually. If we don't have a massive science advantage over some of these players. So that indirect fire might be useful. Okay, gonna upgrade the swords first. Gonna take us a little bit to get all these units upgraded. Pull Sentinel Alliance proposal. You know what? Yeah. Could have, yeah, now I can get a coffee manufactory. Very nice. Get that first. Increase my food output everywhere. Make sure I keep working on these market quarters in here. It's fine. Yep, that all works. Uh, do I need more industry? I could use a little bit more. 32 is pretty good. Do, do like that. Help finish Todaiji and then work on my own stuff. I uh, will nab a terrace farm in there. Help us develop later. Okay, we do not need people on food in here. Thank you very much. Do you have a decent number of research quarters in here? We're going to start filling that out, so let's start getting some of that infrastructure. Didn't realize I stole Great Lighthouse, that's kind of nice. Are they feeling towards me? Hate filled, huh? Possible they declare war at some point. Yeah, they're the Spanish. In fact, I would say it's likely they declare war at some point. I think I'm going to go for Siege Cannons after Chartered Companies. Are they at war? No. Interesting. Wait, who made- who produced pollution? The Zulu. Okay. They're getting a little ahead of themselves, I think, as far as their fame. Um, I'm, I'm a little behind where I would like to be. Turn 157 is uh, pretty late compared to my normal, but I do have to remember as well that the game has changed quite a bit, right? Particularly with regard... Okay, that is... It's not where I want a science quarter. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Build them up here, thank you. I knew I had them somewhere. Um, but the game has changed quite a bit with this update, particularly with how resources are distributed, and I did have a bit of an awkward start, so I have to be a little forgiving with myself in this particular circumstance. 
Jassan are in the industrial with the British. Okay. So this will be more of a near peer conflict than once I declare war here. Um, they have, they're going to have a very similar tech level to me. I still need to upgrade some of these units. Should really consider making an army, making another one, if I really want to declare war here. Babylon's a good candidate, considering how many, uh, how much population I have excess here. I mean, I know I'm making a lot of stuff already. But sometimes you have to choose the things you're making, right? Okay, that should be fine. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually fine with that. I don't really want to go to war with them at the moment. I'm going to focus on securing my own continent. I am stretched a little bit then. I might even consider bringing this army here back. Because these guys are fully upgraded. So I think I could use them. Um, other thing I should really have in Mikne is this right here. So I can uh, produce units a little cheaper. I think Mikne is really my primary city for uh, producing units at the moment. Okay. San Lorenzo. There's mortars. I think we're good on food for the moment. Um, as far as science, I do think that's what I need to focus on. Let's use this area up here for science stuff. So we'll build some research quarters out that way. Get our science infrastructure. All right. Aha, uh, and something I'm forgetting about. Of course they're pillaging this. Um, nothing I can do about that at the moment. Because I still don't know what these javelin riders upgrade into. Pick That's up chivalry good. and see if they upgrade into knights. They do. Bit of an awkward upgrade path for them. Does that give me my... Yeah, that gives me that star. So... I think realistically that's all I get in this era. Like I need an, a lot more money for that. That's going to take a lot of turns. Kind of the same thing with the Esthete Star. So I think it's time to pick our next culture. So the Argentinians are new. Um, I don't really know how to feel about them at the moment. So the Argentinians, you get farmer slots on your city per luxury, and I think we all know how I feel about farmers. You get trader slots on the city per strategic resource deposit, which is a little bit better, but there aren't like a ton of strategic resources. Now there's the uh, Saladero, and this sort of synergizes with Land Rush. You'll get some extra farmer slots. So the Saladero creates salted beef, which is a unique luxury for the Argentinians, and the Saladero gives you reduced army upkeep for salted beef that you have. Also, the Saladero is one of the few districts that exploits both food and industry, um, so that's interesting. And then the Gauchos are a Dragoon replacement, I believe, and they get um, the first attack in combat suppresses enemy units. I don't. I will play the Argentinians at some point. I don't think the Argentinians are a good pick for me this game, so we're going to see who else is available. The Ethiopians are... Um, yeah, we're not playing the Ethiopians. <laughs> They're just, unfortunately, not in a good state, I don't think. Uh, Persians could be an option. Uh, reduced industry costs on things is nice. The Caravanserai is uh, good for money and industry. Uh, their emblematic units pretty decent. I don't think I need the Austro-Hungarians. I think I'm fine for stability, really. It's a little low in some of my cities. Um, but in the industrial era in particular, you start getting a lot of techs that resolve that issue. But, you know, I could play them. French. 
Really, the main benefit to the French is just this plus 10% science. Exhibition Hall is kind of crap now. Um, it's It was originally nerfed. I think it used to be plus one science per population, just flat, and some other effects. And then um, now that Collective Minds can only be active on one city, there's just... Exhibition Hall is just not good. Germans could potentially be very good. Um... I will be using naval units and potentially air units. This unit industry cost will stack with some of the reductions I have already. And my um, pollution is off this game. So coking works is very good. I don't have to worry about things too much. Italians are also a possibility. Could increase my influence outputs. Um, I do have a few commons quarters. And Alpini are very good units. Mexicans I just played. I'm not going to worry about them. Russians, I don't think, are very in a very good state at the moment, um, so I'm going to skip over them. Uh, the Siamese, of course, are a pretty nice builder culture as well. So let me think about who I'm playing. Um... I think the strongest cases are the Persians, the Germans, and the Italians. Yeah, the Siamese can can be good too, but the thing with the Siamese is that I end up playing them pretty much every single game um, because they're honestly they're really good. Now the problem I'd run into a bit with the Siamese is that the floating market doesn't give you slots for population, so that is a bit of a problem for me. I think the Teatro, does it give me enough influence? So the thing, my influence is nice, right? Because if I have more territories under my influence, I get more food because of my um, emblematic or my legacy trait from playing the Taino in the uh, medieval. It gives plus five food per territory that's under your influence. So that could be nice with them. I do think the Persians are probably the best bet here, though, to be honest. Or the Germans. Germans are good, too. Even though their their unit's not as useful. But the coking works could be very nice for me. Especially since, like, I have some fairly high population cities that have kind of low industry output for this point in the game. Um... Does it give slots? No, it doesn't. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I played the Persians on YouTube before. I'm, I'm actually not sure if I have. I think I played the Germans once. But I think we're going to go with the Germans. Uh, just do a little experimentation now that pollution's disabled and that unit industry cost reduction will be nice. Whoop, did not mean to do that. So we're going to take the Germans into the next era. We'll see how they do. Um, and we'll wrap up anything I have outstanding this turn. So in Napata, uh, definitely need some of the science infrastructure, but let's get uh, some more industry first. And then we can work on some of that science infrastructure. Select a tech. Suppose guilds will be necessary at some point. Um, we'll put some time into that. Anyway, we're going to end the turn here, and we'll go into the next era as the Germans. And I'd like to thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.